bring it into the cloud. Perfect. Welcome everybody. Um, we may be only through Zoom today. So for some of you who usually watch this uh, live on Facebook, um, you may have to watch the recording and that may be what you're doing right now. Not right now, right now in my time, but in your time as you're watching this. So um, welcome, congratulations for being here. This is the Real Estate Investing Success webinar. And what we'd like to do on these webinars is just bring out uh, different people who are doing things that are working in today's marketplace. So oftentimes we'll bring, you know, brand new folks that are just getting into investing. Sometimes we'll bring very seasoned investors who have mastered a specific strategy. We'll even bring on experts such as, uh, you know, accountants and, and um uh, mortgage brokers and, and people of that nature, licensed professionals. Now, that, with that being said, um, if there's anybody that we bring on to this, this webinar that is licensed, even if they are licensed, they're not acting in that capacity. And today you're going to hear from some folks and we are not licensed professionals. So we are not acting in the capacity of a realtor, a, uh, um, a mortgage broker. We're not acting in the capacity of a, a lawyer or an accountant. This is really just some individuals having success that are willing to share that success with other people. So don't, this is not to be taken as uh, legal advice or financial advice. This is uh, really, you know, us sharing what's working for us. And then, you know, you can take and glean from that. But of course, we want to make sure that anything that you decide to do, um, that you do uh, contact your legal professionals and everybody's situation is uh, specific. Everybody's situation is, is different. And so don't think that just because Tim and Tim are having success in Georgia, that you need to go out to Georgia to invest, right? It's more about the principles than it is the specifics. And the specifics are always going to be something that you need to double check on, triple check on, uh, make sure you're doing your numbers and uh, factoring these things in. So I know that uh, Tim has joined us on the line. So I'm just going to check in with him and uh, see, Tim, I know that you're at a property right now. You're meeting with a contractor and uh, you're kind of finishing up what you're doing with him so that you can uh, take us on a little bit of a tour of this property that, uh, that you bought with Tim Jensen. And uh, you, if I understand correctly, have never seen it in person until you just flew out there and uh, this is a property that you guys are already um, midway through the process or, or already started the process of investing. So Tim Freeland, can you hear me? And are you in a position where uh, you can take it away? All right, it looks like Tim is um, still getting prepared and getting into a spot where he can do that. So basically, um, the cool part about this story for me is, you know, I look at uh, Tim Freeland and what he's done over the years, and I'm just really impressed. You know, this is a guy, one of the probably the most conservative guys that I know um, in the way that he got started. I mean, he was, you know, exceeding his yearly income year after year. And he still didn't go full time in real estate. And, uh, and uh, he's in the training and teaching others, and even investing outside of the state, uh, alongside people that he's helped to get started in the world of real estate investing. So, Tim, I see you now. Um, and hey, <laughs> I hear you now. So are you in a position where you can take things on? Yeah, so we were just uh, finishing up talking with our contractor. It went, we thought an hour and a half would be enough. We started at uh, 8 a.m. Uh, mountain time and, you know, <laughs> 10 a.m. over here in, uh, in uh, Georgia. And it wasn't enough. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we're still, so, uh, yeah, my uh, partner's inside talk with him, just kind of finishing things up. But, hey, guys, thank you so much for joining either over here or online. What do you got here? Ah, thanks for coming on, Andy. Thanks for coming, Josiah. Woo! 
And um, so I didn't send a, the text. Usually I send out uh, as a reminders through the uh, Renaissance iOS. So, and we should, but we might have some more people online too uh, watching. Well, and I will let you know that I was not able to get it to go live. For some reason, the live stream to uh, Facebook was not working. So we are recording and we can upload this as a recording later on. Okay, gotcha. If people have questions, they, they can have it. But yeah, so uh, Christian, thank you so much for stalling for time for me and to taking care of this. But um, I am in the beautiful state of Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, we're just working on this home right over here behind us. And uh, this is the backside of it. And uh, yeah, so we're just, uh, again, we're just uh, talking with contractors and and uh, doing, uh, we're talking with the contractor we're in the middle of the budget. We're run into a couple hiccups that we're just trying to iron out as well as, you know, I'd love to check on my properties. It's a great uh, excuse to go and travel the country. Uh, so I'm having a lot of, uh, having a lot of fun over here. Uh, Tim is going to join me as soon as he's done talking with uh, Al, our guy over there. But, um, but yeah, so I'm just trying to, I want, I, I want to ask Tim some questions because one thing I like about Tim is that I've known him uh, since high school, uh, Tim Jensen. So, you know, Tim squared is what somebody say double Tim's. Um, so uh, I went to high school with him and uh, I've known him since then. And over like four years ago, uh, he asked me about wanting to get into real estate and he had wanted to do, um, um, get into um, uh, what is that multifamily with, with a guy that was kind of helping him out. And he spent like a year or so doing that. He spent some money on, on, on a program, but he did nothing with it. He wasn't, he didn't, he wasn't able to, to break into real estate. Um, but uh, Tim decided, uh, it took him a long time uh, to do, just kind of look, check things out, see what he really wants to do. But he finally made up his mind in doing real estate uh, this year. So he came in, uh, he decided to be a student with Renatus and he, he just jumped all, you know, he committed a hundred percent, both feet, <laughs> both feet in the water and he's running with it. And so I uh, joined about January and uh, we bought, he it took him a, a few a few months to you know go through the studying and things like that and then um, we found this deal uh, back in May so I would say five months after we found it and we closed on it and uh, and so now we're about a couple months into the project now it's a really big project that is uh, making me sweat sometimes because you know of, of how much uh, how much is going into this baby beautiful. Um, and yeah, and then also we're gonna be closing on another one in a couple of weeks here with Tim on a second one as well. So, um, and uh, and so he's gonna be, um, yeah. So we're looking, uh, we're looking forward to that one uh, as well. But um, okay. So uh, some questions. I'd like to get to Tim. Hey Tim, you good? We we'll have some questions for the people here in in uh, the Zoom land. All right, what do we got? So. Uh, do you don't mind I'm going to turn it sideways here? Do you don't mind kind of talking a little bit about your adventure of terms of um, like where you came from, why real estate, and what you've been working on right now, and kind of what you've been doing? Okay. Um, so I think I first contacted Tim about five years ago. Oh, five. Okay. It was about five years ago. Uh, I reached out. I asked him about Renatus. I think he had posted a couple of times. I've always wanted to do real estate. That's always kind of been the goal. And my wife and I have been talking about like well, we'll get to this level and then we can start investing in real estate because, you know, I didn't have the education. So I didn't know that there are other ways to do it without having to save up buku bucks, you know. Um, and then I think it was November timeframe last year. Yeah. I reached out to you again. Um, we mulled over it again for a couple of months. And I think I finally pulled the trigger in January. Uh, did the essentials packet, uh, essentials course. I, I did all in um, the AIT. Oh, there we are. Oh. And um, showing us have been going through it and trying to focus on fix and flips because that was my uh, real estate investor ID. And then, I mean, basically from there, I've just been trying to network, going to local REI groups here, trying to network with contractors and other investors and wholesalers and and the lot, and started getting um, realtors who were sending me some of the deals that they thought that they thought could work on MLS. Um, how did he find this or the other? What do you mean? Oh, it said that we found this deal and then you found a second deal. Oh, okay. After that. So this deal, uh, this one came from MLS actually, um, but it was like an estate sale. Uh, I think it was an elderly woman who had lived here and she had passed away. And so the, 
the trust or her daughter, I can't remember which, wanted to move it uh, pretty quickly. So, I mean, I haven't found anything else on MLS that comes close to the, the way this was set up in terms of, of numbers working out pretty well. And then the other deal that we found, I got from a wholesaler. Yeah, but I started in January, really diving into the education. We found this property, I believe it was in May timeframe. Yeah. And then we, we signed at the end of July. And so we've been kind of working on that since. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, but why real estate though? Why real estate for you? In fact, I can kind of change it so that, that way you're not looking at your scale. So kind of weird. Of Honestly, it. like I said, it, it was just something that I've always wanted to, to do. Um, and the more that I learned about it and the more that I saw, you know, other friends and you, Tim, who, who were doing it, it just... I don't know. I was just really attracted to the idea of, of doing real estate and owning property and flipping and having, having rentals and stuff like that. I, I don't know if I can pinpoint to something that says, yes, this is exactly why I wanted real estate. Um, other than I saw the financial potential, the opportunity to have this be my full-time job and not have to not, and, and have an opportunity to build wealth uh, in a little bit better way than I would sitting at my desk job um, doing a nine to five. Um, and my desk job before this was in a building without windows either. And I couldn't have a phone or anything like that. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't the most pleasant uh, a job. Yeah. So this was an opportunity to kind of break free from that and uh, spend most of my days doing, doing this. Yeah. Cool. I don't That'd know if awesome. that answers your question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So why real estate is it's always been in your blood. All right. It has. I mean, like even... I've always wanted to do it. I don't have any family members or any friends who have done it other than I know Tim has done it. Um, I, I was well, it? Didn't your family interesting that you're? I have I have a, a brother-in-law who does real estate out here. Okay. Yeah, brother-in-law. So my okay. wife's family. Um, but that's it. That was my only connection to it, and it was more. I just I felt like there's a lot of potential there, and and now that I'm I'm like on the ground, getting the gears running a little bit, I'm seeing that there, there is a lot of potential. I think in the very beginning, honestly, the biggest hurdle is getting over like the imposter syndrome imposter oh yeah yeah i yeah, spend a lot of time going to these meetings and fake it till you make it yeah people are like well i'm doing this kind of arv thing and i'm like yeah i love that arv man i love it <laughs> um, take it out to the do sand yeah, dunes. Let's, let's do that <laughs> do the arv thing again that was cool um but as i got the education as i started to like actually talk to people and actually see how things fall into place as you do it i mean that that's that's gone away and it's to the point now where i feel very confident moving forward it's just you know setting up my own schedule, setting up my own timelines and, and, and funnels and stuff like that for finding deals is that that's my main focus now, because I feel like I have a pretty good foundation on which to, to do this, to actually make it work, you know? Yeah. Okay. So questions though. Okay. This deal. Yes. Um, what was the, um, since I, I kind of know all these, but I want them to answer them. So <laughs> what's the, uh, what's the purchase price on this deal? So we got it for 239 or 240 basically. Uh -huh. Um, yeah. That's purchase price. Okay. Yeah. So 240. And then uh, what were you hoping that like at the beginning, like, what do you think of the ARV is going to be? So initially we thought it was going to be about 450. Um, but we knew that the house was going to need a lot of work. It was built in 1976. Um, there's, there was water damage. The floors were kind of crooked a little bit. So we, we figured there'd be a lot of structural issues as well as, I mean, you can see some of the old wood around the side of the house is holes in it and fading and, and, I mean, some of it, I'm sure, is the original 1976 wood. Um, yeah, kind of say it's yeah. kind of cracking up here and fraying right there. So we got a couple of contractors to come through, and they 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 all put us relatively in the same range of anywhere between like 90 and 130. So we kind of figured that in, um, and then we had that ARV set up for about 450. Um, well, the, what was, so the question that uh, Andy asked was, what was the original? Uh, Purchase or the uh, listing price was it one? Listing price was two fifty, so I put in a bid for two thirty nine or two two thirty yeah, nine. Yeah, two thirty nine. So um, yeah, I I done and we, no closing costs. We're not. We didn't pay closing costs. We paid our own closing costs. Right. But we didn't offer to pay their closing right. costs. It was just a regular purchase. And what kind of uh, issues do we run into as we? Because this is his first deal and my first deal in Georgia. Right. And so right. Uh, a lot of learning. Um, like, because you think. Cash, right. one of the issues that we run in, ran right. into, the difference between Utah and, and Georgia is that when you say, hey, here's a cash offer, we can close quickly, um, but we were closing with hard money, and so it's a different paper. Like cash is cash, and hard money 
is not cash. Right. And so they have that distinction here. And so when you're doing a hard money offer, because we didn't put in, we put in a cash offer. Well, we put in cash with the option of having institutional yeah. funding if we need it. And, and, the, uh, and the seller's realtor really like she, dug a knife into yeah. that saying, hey, you said you had cash. Where is that cash? She we wanted need proof of funds like right then. Like yeah. Right then and there. Proof of funds. And I was like, wait, so for me to purchase the property, I need to have, I need to show at least $239,000 in my accounts um, since I partnered with Sam. And in fact, yeah. I was going to ask you a question. How did you come up with the funds to do this project? Well, I was, I partnered with Tim. <laughs> yeah, <that's cool>. <laughs> <laughs> How much money of your own are you putting into the deal? Nothing. Nothing. Wow. So, yeah. So, I'm, <laughs> again, that's me, but in the, how it much? Was, it was networking, right? I mean, that's yeah. the whole thing is networking. I mean, Tim's built a network of investors and I'm, I, I, I started networking with him and other people around here. And, you know, I brought this deal to Tim and, and he felt that the numbers work and look good for him. And so we move forward. Yeah, and it's a it's a price range that I'm comfortable with. Although the amount of cost to put into this thing, we're thinking ninety. Now we're looking at a budget of around one thirty, one forty, maybe. Hopefully, hopefully we're, we're going to be again. around there. <laughs> um, but our original bid of like forty of a, of our like sorry original ARV was four fifty. But after talking to multiple people who know this area, we're yeah. looking at more minimum five hundred. And yeah. so we but we have to make sure we do the right finishes. Right. Before we were doing minimal stuff, and now we're like, okay, now we're actually going to be tearing out that bathroom. We're going to be tearing out this bathroom. Right. We're going to be we raising the floor. We I think we were going to plan on doing it anyway, right? Yeah, we were going to do it anyway, but still, anyway. yeah. Yeah, um, but um, but yeah. So four fifty, nine thirty. So how much we're looking to make? Well, how much uh, with knowing those numbers? Do you know how much we're going to be hoping to clear? Well, it all depends on our final, what we get on this final bid. Yeah, I mean that's the big hurdle. Really, is is paring down this final bid, and I think. I think the one thing that I learned from this project is that before we have anybody come and start demoing stuff, we need to have that bid number nailed down. So that was a big learning curve for me. Um, yeah. Like making here's, sure. Here's our original paperwork. That, we had an original bid. And then we just lots of markings on it, lots of writing and stuff on it too, in terms of us kind of update it. But that's what they gave. And they just started going to town and started working, even doing things that's like outside of the, what we talked about. Some of it was, yeah. And, and they're like, well, we had to do it. And so we're like, shoot, like, not in her bid and then right. Right. A, this original bid cost about 112,000 without windows right and now he said he got a window bid but I don't... we got the window bid i have a, i'll have to show you over okay. I, don't have I haven't seen bid. the window but, so but also once we had realtors come through who sell who sell specifically in this neighborhood they kind of showed us some of the updates that people look for in in this neighborhood um and that inherently raised our our um our rehab budget right like because we knew that we could sell it for higher and it needed certain finishes. We knew that we had to raise that that uh, that budget a little bit. So yeah, because well, in we've the been beginning of it, that around you in know? the beginning of it too, uh, when they gave us a bid for one twelve for everything that's on here, they said um, we paired it back and said, oh, you know what, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that, we're not going to do this thing to the kitchen, right, uh, and stuff. And so, but then on um, now after we heard back from that realtor, we we're like, okay, we started putting not those things back those in, things. but yeah. we still took away a couple things. We added a few things, so we're hoping that the bid's going to be still similar yeah it's gonna go over it but we were hoping a lot in fact uh we got a bid uh like just a verbal bid of all the things at like over two hundred thousand. Uh, yeah so <laughs> and that's where i was like oh, well, hold on things. what's going on <laughs> that's not what we no it's, it shouldn't be because we're taking away we're adding what's going on and so there's a um there's a an, another partner he's a gc and he adds uh his stuff as well like he added his like his uh cut mm -hmm. and he's like 45 percent yeah which, which includes 25 uh, he says that it includes 25 insurance and 20 percent his cut and for me i'm usually hearing like usually it's like 15 percent for normal uh for normal uh contractors that i've heard of i haven't heard this uh, whole insurance part and maybe christian knows or you know somebody who listens to this kind of knows a little bit more about it or somebody who is a contractor understands but um, for me, that sounds extremely high. So what we might be doing, just what we might be doing is uh, having the guys do what they're doing, just finish up their work, what we asked them to do, where they are, like to a stopping like to point. A stopping point. Yeah. And then have somebody else come in here who can do it for, who knows that they can do it for a different bid. So we're getting a second bid. I hate doing this switching contractors mid, uh, mid project. It's 45% is an expensive. Yeah, well, we're going from, bonus, right? going from like 120 to 200 is, is huge. 
And well, so, so the original the original bid that they sent was parts and labor of about 80k, and then he put on his 45% to bring it up around that 112 number, whatever the exact math is. I, I haven't sat down to do it, but now that we added a few things, the the contractors looking at it maybe being parts and labor around that 120 130 mark, and when you add 45% to that, we get up to we get up to the 200s, which is a problem. You know, Huge problem because sure. he, he he and I think that bid he actually added. He added like he went to the 140, which already included his first bit cut from his first bit, and then added another 45. We think on top that's of it. maybe what happened, but that's why we met with the GC today to really like, okay, this is what we're doing, yeah, and we're gonna finalize every little minute detail, all the finishings, so that we can send it to him, and he can tell us exactly what it's going to be. Which we could probably so, work on that tonight too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So that so that we can move forward and um, get his final bid and see if we got to bring another contractor in. Yeah, and um. Uh, the other thing too is that we had um, we uh, did our due diligence on these guys because they've worked with other uh, investors, big time investors. Too. Yeah, a lot of investors use them and they just like, that's their go to people and they just go and do them. And like the, the price he originally came in at, we were like, wow, like Perfect. that's awesome. So right. we we Perfect. did our due diligence on these on these guys, but like just starting a project without uh, actually knowing yeah. exactly everything you're going to do, yeah. really uh, you run into things that were running to right now so, so guess what we're doing on our next project we're going to nail down every little piece of information before anybody steps in that house because we're not going to have another situation like this yeah because we or in fact the other guys we have coming in uh no, we're actually going to see what they're going to do with this one yeah same yeah. people we found i found a new contractor uh, yep. again through the the rei local uh, community here um i found a guy that i think is going to be pretty good but yeah we're gonna have lunch with them today and figure that out so yeah so do you guys want to see the house that we're working on here in Georgia, in a yeah. what, it's like it's like a really, what do you call this? It's like a really high end community in Augusta. Yeah, so this is like this is the premier neighborhood in Augusta. In fact, when I brought contractors in here to do bids, they're like, "Whoa, I've never seen anybody doing uh, a rehab in in Westlake." It's called Westlake Community. So, yeah, which is yeah. actually there's a golf course right behind us. This is like one of the tee offs. I think it's like uh, the fifth hole, maybe. And they, they don't host the Masters here, do they? No, what no, were we saying? I keep on saying that. I stuck on it. But yeah, there's a golf course. I'm just going to run over here. <laughs> there's nobody in here. There's no fences keeping me. Okay, there's people coming, though. I haven't been up here, guys. It's my first time. But boom, beautiful golf course. And one of our backups is that we can actually keep this property as a rental, as a uh, hosting rental. Um, for like masters and stuff they come over here and i heard that you can get like per like a master's weekend or two weeks or whatever like close to twenty five thousand for a rental like for for the house and and stuff so that's it's not bad right like you could this could be like a, a hosting this house from uh, a masters yeah absolutely Mo uh westlake community has everything set up for you if you own a, a house here um they put you in touch with the right people to be able to set up your uh your property for rental during masters but i mean properties out here like if you had a four or five bedroom four bath thing i mean people get 15 16 sometimes as high as twenty thousand dollars for the one week so it's it's a big time thing but, you know it's, it's nothing that's people want that you know people want that yeah okay here we so go this is the back side of the house yeah we're on the back beautiful flowers Smells great. I would love to have those flowers in my house. So we kind of didn't discuss this, but yeah, we're gonna do. We're just gonna do clean up and trim down on yeah. the landscaping. Yep. Which we actually didn't discuss from before. And we are deciding whether or not to keep or get rid of this deck. You think we gotta get rid of it? Yeah. We didn't discuss before replacing this roof, but now we felt like what we needed, we want to do a layover, but a lot of, a lot of, uh, and we also got the approval from the HOA to do it, yeah. but then finding somebody who can do it is who been really hard, it. who will do it. People can do it, they just don't want to. But yeah, a lot of them are saying, no, you need to, re you need to do a full replace because if you were to lay over, uh, put a layover over it, it's going to, uh, uh, what'd they say? Sweat. It's going to sweat in between them and it's going to deteriorate and it's going to start because it's super humid down here i mean we're at like 80 to 90 percent humidity all year round yeah my book feels already kind of a little yeah, damp it's, it's humid um boom here's the here's the but the other thing is marketing yard. people don't want their name on a roof that's overlaid in westlake 
that's the big part oh really yeah so people are like if you're gonna have me overlay it i'm gonna you're gonna have to draft up a piece of paper that says i'm not liable for it i did it because you asked me to i'm fine with that (laughs) (laughs) and yeah so we're just on the outside this is like the uh garage and it is um connected to a mother-in-law suite so this house is like 4,000 square feet. 4140. Yeah, 4140. So over 4,000 square feet, six bedrooms, four baths, I think. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Yep, four and a half. Four and a um, half. Yeah, and the siding over here, we don't have to go all the way around, but that is this beautiful home. And the thing that's weird about this home is that this is like a wood style home while everybody else is kind of a brick and other things but uh apparently in this neighborhood a lot of people like oddball homes like this so that's kind of it's unique it's not the traditional like manor style homes that you find yeah like, like the, the one, one across, across the street, the street for example that, that brick is a very common platform here in Westlake. Yeah. And so when something that's kind of that. unique like this shape wise comes up people go crazy for it yeah so here is steps up to the house and this old which we're thinking about either replacing the whole thing or just replacing this parts but maybe we replace the whole door on. yeah so this used to be a little entryway that went to right here and then it dropped down two stairs to the floor down below so the whole living room was a sunken living room yeah you guys so missed door, it you come in and take the steps down there's a door that goes back to the master bedroom right there. So we had them raise the floor to make it even throughout. Did you guys hear that? We raised the floor about a foot? Um, it was about a foot, yeah. I think it was like 10 inches to be exact. But 10 inches, yeah. So it used to be the windows down here, the fireplace went all the way down, but we're raising that up. We're going to put some, uh, we're going to build it up to like right here and just do kind of a shorter window here. Okay, yeah. And you, can, you guys can hear okay, right? We have a fan in the background. Yeah, if you can't hear, let us know. Um... We're going to whitewash, just whitewash Paint that. the fireplace. We're going to close in that door to the master bedroom. So this is not going to be a door anymore. It's going to be the back end of a, his closet right in here. And then that entrance will be the only entrance into the master bedroom. Yeah, so there are two doors into this master bedroom before, and it was really odd. So originally, they had two walls here coming out to right where those studs are, you can see. And they had a closet that came this whole area and all the way up to the top you can see so we're gonna we knocked out the closet we're gonna knock out these pillars to make it just one big open room and then we, we extended the closet back there to come out so there's a window in the her closet and we're building a his closet to match on the other side and you can see the layout they built the frame already yeah these will be two closets this will be the her closet and keeping the window and then his closet over here and that would be uh, walled off. Yeah, and because this is West Lake, we're having to do hardwood floor throughout. Um, because that's when this is the community, you know, people want the hardwood. Here is the shower. We are not touching the shower. This is the original shower. We're just keeping it as is. But uh, we probably want to update. Uh, most likely, want to want the update. shower head. The shower head, the yeah, most likely. So originally as well, just above, those used to be hanging ceilings that came down to like right here. So we raised those up to make it a little bit more open in here. And then this was the whole vanity area. You can see the, the hookups for the sink and the plumbing there. It came out to like right, right here is where it came out. And then they had this section that came down and went back in. I don't know what they had up there or why they did it. So we're raising that up. We're doing a new countertop in here. The toilet over here, we're actually moving away from where it is and we're putting it over here in the corner and we're going to build a little wall that comes out that you can open up and make this like a toilet room and then everything else in here is just open and uh, way more spacious than it was before. So that kind of opens up this room, shower, the closets and stuff. That's, that's basically the master bedroom. There's a door that goes out to the deck in the back, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, so we'll do a quicker walkthrough so you guys can see it. We can leave it up for questions for you guys. So a big thing is whether or not to remove this uh, this uh, this pillar. No, not a pillar. It's to remove this um, um, 
wall or not because they can actually hang it inside yeah. and make it all flush or they can get rid of it so guys just take a look and let me know what you think yeah so we can the engineer told us we can make it flush with the ceiling up there and just have it open um but obviously that's gonna that's gonna cost money it's gonna ask right? yeah add to the budget so we're trying to see if it would just look good if we just just kept it you know yeah uh, so we already opened it up a little bit because there used to be lights that came down out of the sink right here um you can even see the popcorn ceiling where that that fixture was beforehand popcorn it ceiling. extended all the way out and it was just as low as the beam there so yeah i'd yeah. love to hear what you guys think we yeah. should open it up or leave it i mean for me honestly I like to, I mean, our budget's already kind of going high. I feel right. like for me personally, I Just think it looks it. okay. Right. I think it looks, I mean, we already opened up this wall to make it look bigger. Yeah. Um, is it, is it enough to add another two grand possibly to the budget, maybe even more to, to get rid of this pillar, to raise it or not? That's kind of something I'm personally mulling over. We're going to ask our designer what she thinks. I know that's kind of what the, the realtor was saying, like get rid of it. I don't. I think, we'd be okay. I think I don't think people are gonna say, "Hey, I don't like that. I'm not buying this house." This is. It seems yeah, like the really bathrooms and kitchen are like need to. We need to hit those homes, and then, and then the flooring. Well, yeah. I mean, the, but if it's like it's like no, it's a it's a foundation. There's nothing we can do, quote unquote, nothing we can do, or whatever. And this is funny about Georgia houses, since you guys. Uh, the weird thing about Georgia houses, you guys, is that everyone loves to have a formal dining room. Nobody ever uses it except for Thanksgiving and Christmas, but they have to have the dining room. So we're leaving this as the dining room, the formal dining room. They're going to set up a kitchen or a table in the other room, and they're going to eat in there 90% of the time. But, you know, it is what it is. So we'll just replace a couple of these windows and the lighting and just paint this room, and we're good. Um, kitchen. We are, the problem with the kitchen is cabinet space and, and storage. So we're gonna extend this, uh, this island out and back and add more cabinets on that side of it and extend the, um, the countertop to have a little overhang on the back for like bar stool seating if they want. But there's more storage space underneath uh, the island. This uh, wet bar area, we're actually gonna take out and door, put doors here and then uh, make it into a pantry. So, yep, yep. And yeah, something else that we ran into, yeah, these floors opened up. Something that we ran into is that we weren't expecting is for this to be rotted out. This yeah, flooring was rotted. Water damage there. And so they fixed, they're fixing, or they fixed it so far. And there's a little bit more to fix on the, here in this corner. Because uh, it's uh, lifting up a little bit from where it was. Uh, if, you, if you look at that and then look on this side. Uh, well, you can't really tell it's at that angle. But, um, but no, it's, 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 it's sloping. And they replaced this whole floor over here. Yeah, this room's weird. It was an add-on. We're still figuring out what to do with it. This is a closet that goes back into the mother-in-law suite and the closet. Uh, or hallway. Sorry, hallway. hallway. Yeah, and this is the, we're just doing this a little bit of stuff. Room. Just a little bit of stuff to update it in here. Yeah. But this had some foundation issues, so they tore it up and realized that there's more foundation issues than they thought. Turn it upside. So they were talking today about putting it, because this entire wall is sitting on these two beams and these two jacks underneath right there. And you can see it's slanted. The whole hallway was slanted like this. See how it kind of runs down that way. So they were talking about putting uh, four more, uh, what did he call them, like cement, just- The cement pillars. Pillars, put cement pillars in there to hold it up and make it not slant anymore. Coming down, boom. <laughs> These and two this doors is, go to the outside. This is outside by the garage. This is outside in the back where we were. Outside by the garage, yeah. We're going to have the doors open the other way because it's weird. Oh, they open in the center and hit each other. And by the way, there's a jacuzzi right over here. We don't know to keep it or not. Let me... Right. You think we're going to have to keep it? What else do you do in this spot in the back? It's like built... As long as it works, then, yeah, I think... I mean, it doesn't look nasty. Turn it up. But maybe get rid of these. Home, maybe get rid of Yeah. Yeah, take it home if you need to. <laughs> and then uh, whatever. <sighs> I would really like to see what that other guy can do. I call this like the, the hall of doors because there's a door here, a door here, a door here. And they there got rid of this door. door, here. <laughs> this, door here. And this comes into the, the bottom, the downstairs part of the mother-in-law suite. We're just going to carpet all of this. 
And we're gonna kind of do some demo and repairs in the bathroom here, but kind of minimal. We were thinking about that wet bar in the kitchen. We were thinking about bringing it and putting it in here. So it's a little kitchen that thing. And again, that's for master's purposes. Uh, people coming in wanting to buy it, want to be able to put their house up for master's. So putting a kitchen that back here would be a, a better sound. A bonus, place. yeah, good plus. A bonus. And this is just a room. Whew, it is pretty uh, humid. Yeah, how are you? Yeah, burn it up a little bit. I'm burning up just yeah, yeah. There you go. Boom, boom. Any other questions or how are we looking? Yeah, good. Okay. So this is Mother in Law Street upstairs. There was a ton of water damage and rotting out by the door, you can see. So this whole area they just took up and that's it back there on the wall. You can see all the water damage and uh, coming in on this side and that side. It's pretty bad. Yeah. So, so like fabric. The flooring. We're gonna have to replace all the, <clears throat> the casing around the door. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And it's fix that. Plus the slats between on the balcony are way too far apart. I just think about my little kid. He'd fall right through that. Easy. Yeah, these are too wide. So we'll have to we'll have to put more in there to. Yeah, I told him to put like this whatever we put on the skinny ones. Yeah, just put them in, all in between. Yeah. Whew. And then the bathroom, and that's it. We're down to, uh, I mean, this is very 1970 style home. So you've got these old tub units, tub and shower units, the old is that, vanity here. Is it old, old? I mean, it's probably newer since the house, but. Yeah. And then this beautiful closet right here, this little shelving. Uh, little, uh, what do you call this? Get in closet. Yeah, so that so that's it. That's the house. Yeah. This is this house. And like I said, we're we are still running through a couple things, uh, a couple uh, uh, a couple things that kind of we got uh, stuck with, but we're looking at a profit from I mean, we, were, we were hoping as long as we get the budget where we need to be with opening up our budget and get trying to shoot for the five hundred thousand dollar range, hopefully five fifteen, maybe five twenty five. I don't know. Hopefully we'll get a good one. Yeah. That we will be uh, we will be netting. 80 grand instead yeah. of uh, instead of 50 grand. Right. And well, we might be back down to 50 if this budget is <laughs> or less. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to run another contractor in here to see what he can do. Yeah. And maybe pay out the guy. Already, so. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so um, Christian, are there any questions that uh, anybody has or that you have well, with this? I don't see any questions uh, in particular. I mean, I guess I would, I'm curious to understand um, with this contractor, did he give you a bid without his 45% in there in the beginning? I'm, I'm a little confused there. Or did he say that that would be there and then his increase, his bid just increased substantially? So the original bid did have his 45% in there. He told me because it's on his official letterhead. Um, the issue is, He's about, he's probably like 80 years old. And I, I genuinely wonder if he just forgot that he already added his, his bid in there. So that's why we pulled his GC over here today to, to actually nail down. Okay. What do we do different? What did we, what are we still doing? And, and make sure that that's not what happened. Yeah. So, so I, I think, yeah, I think he just, cause from going from like, uh, from like one, like a hundred thousand to 200,000 was just at, we well, with decreasing things and adding things. I think he just shot a number. I just I thought he just shot from the hip and thinking like, ah, this is really confusing. Two hundred grand. I don't know, but no, well, that's where that's where we need to yeah nail it meet down. with him right. and actually nail it down and say no, we're we're you're going to be at two thirty like or we need to do this. But you know we were adding a couple things that we might just sub it out so that they don't do it because why we could just sub out like the roof and have somebody do that right for cheaper for cheaper than. Um, do we, we don't need to lock up for me. Oh, wait, I do want to take some more pictures of oh, yeah, the okay. property though. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was a big that that's a big I guess for me that was a red flag. That was like I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting him to say to keep on top of everything, but yeah, I feel like we have to be the ones to keeping tra keeping track of everything or something. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not like getting it. good vibes uh, as we're as yeah, we're going I, don't, along. I, don't, I mean we're not gonna use him on the next property. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we found sure. somebody else that we're going to try that seems like they're more of a prod. Like, Christian, if you know Matt Nelson, 
and like kind of what he does to help other people's projects. Uh, we found a guy that kind of does that out here that's been really successful and he's actually does it for hedge funds and he's done over 200 last year. He did 180 for the one hedge fund last year. Yeah, so for one hedge fund, hedge fund company, 180 properties this guy did and he's and yeah uh, so we're going to try him out on this other deal that we got where it's actually going to be a big budget as well um i can't seem to find the low budget ones man i'm bringing all these big budget ones to you <laughs> <laughs> well yeah we'll just keep looking yeah that's your job right now is to look for right, good people right. yeah um good question christian that's uh that yeah the, uh, what we were i'm not been very impressed i didn't really want him to start until we actually had a nailed down bid which i thought we did with that I thought we did too. And then we said, hey, we're going to pair it away and we're not, we're going to change some things. And then he also found some other things that were not included in the bid that he had to go into replacing. But I don't like the communication. It's a yeah. little scary to know yeah. that somebody's doing work and then you'll find out at the end. I don't like surprises. Right, right. Yeah. So, yeah. Good question. <laughs> Thank you, Christian. Okay. And, um, uh, is there anything else, Christian, or any other questions that you might have? No, this is a cool experience. I guess for you, what made you uh, feel most comfortable um, in investing in a place that you've never, I mean, I don't know if you've ever been to Georgia at all, um, let right. alone invested there. So what was it, what are, the, what are some of the steps that you went through that made you feel comfortable investing your own funds to do this deal? Well, first of all, it's a guy like this, feet on the ground. <laughs> uh, app 100. I would not do a deal if somebody said, "Hey, in Ohio, you can go ahead and 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 invest in properties." But I don't know anybody. I don't know. There's no. I don't have feet in the ground in anybody in Ohio. But if I did, yeah, I'd invest. Like if there's if there's uh, good money and secure money to be made. So kind of the things that I've done. Whew, it's getting hot. Let's go inside real quick. Yeah. Or. Uh, we can go straight through the door. So a couple of things that I did was before I even, because I did so much you did a lot of research research into Georgia. So I looked up a city, uh, like city um, uh, statistics. And there's some websites like city data where you kind of say like, how is the uh, population growing? Is it decreasing? What's their average income? What's the average uh, home values? And all sorts of things like that, that I was looking into. So city data. That's number one that I looked into going to a new market. Uh, number two, or number one, number one is feet on the ground. Number zero, yeah, I wouldn't do it if I didn't have somebody I trust. Uh, number two is look up the area to see what it is. Uh, number three is talk to realtors and also get their beat. What's going on? Like this Westlake, it's a higher end. When most of the homes in Georgia are going for like 100,000. Uh, and then all of a sudden you got a $400,000, $500,000 home. Uh, I had to see, okay, what's really selling in that area. So I took a look at, I used uh, Zillow because Zillow actually has all the data that they're showing here. Um, so that's number four. Like, and after I talk to realtors, I get CMAs, which stands for comparable market analysis. I need that probably from a couple different people, not just one. Um, and then, um, uh, and then even as we're going along, asking uh, like realtors who work in this area, people in this area, that is another, but I think we did that more mid than we did yeah. before. But I wanted to see what price per square foot was going for, what my market, who my uh, competitors were, how, how long was the days on market? Like I needed to like, it's like a brand new area for me. I mean, for me, I'm, I'm Salt Lake City, Utah or Ogden, you know, I'm, I'm in those areas. And so it's easy to... Um, I know that area, so I don't have to spend so much time in analyzing. I know the days on the market. I know what price range I could sell it for. So I had to kind of learn all that again in this area. But Tim's picking up, and so this is the first project. We're picking up his second project in a couple of weeks, um, possibly a third one if that works out. But I mean, he's going along, so we need to know that. So we're starting to know these things, and we know what the prices are. And so now we can kind of pull from the hip a lot easier. Right, it's me, it's me finding the right people too, because like we, right we people, did this yeah. ARV based on the CMA from a realtor who didn't sell in this particular neighborhood. And that apparently has made all the difference because I met a guy who was a, a real estate broker at the REI meeting and he lives in this neighborhood and grew up in this neighborhood. And he came over and he's like, you guys are doing this like a mid range, like buy and hold flip. Like, why are you not, why are you not going all out? This is Westlake. And I'm like, well, ARV was 450. He's like, no, no, no. And so it was bringing in people who knew this particular area to help us feel way more confident. Well, help Tim feel way more confident in 
doing these updates and making yeah, because yeah, Tim kept oh yeah, this Tim <laughs> kept on asking me, come on, like. I think we, I, why don't we open up the budget? I'm like, no, let's be conservative. Like, cause I am a conservative investor. I don't want to, I don't want to spend 200 grand to only get back 50. I want to, you know, and so that's something I had to think about is, is if we put in an extra 30 grand, are we going to get our money back and then some. And so on this, we put in 30 grand. I mean, we, we make 80 instead of 50, we make 80. So, I mean, that is, we put in 30 grand, we make another 30 grand. Is that kind of what it was? Uh, yeah, if we no, get it at the but, 525 mark, that would be. No, it would be more than that. So I was going off of. More than so if we put in 30 grand. Yeah. Yeah, I was going off of 500, not 515, 525 or more. So being conservative on the high end, even. So hopefully, you now minimum 500, but hopefully we can sell for more. 525, yeah. 550. Right. I think you're even saying 600, but I don't know. No, I don't think we're going to say. They said about 125 a square foot. Which for us comes about five fifteen, five twenty. Yeah, one hundred dollar, one hundred twenty five dollars a square foot. With yeah, yeah average. This is a four thousand, forty one hundred square foot home. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it comes up about five fifteen. So, five, good question, five, five, Christian. I've also done so. I do out of state deals. Again, it's just feet on the ground and making sure I know I know the market, and I know people who also know the market. It's the biggest thing. And then finding investors who are willing to invest out of state as well. So Christian, and the, final question for me then is how did you find those investors that were willing to invest and trust you with their money out, out of the state? Uh, first of all, it's who you are, like your reputation. And if people trust you with their money, that's important. That's the most important thing I, I feel is do people trust you with their money? And, and then, and then the next one is, um, and I just made a few phone calls. Like I, I probably made like five or six phone calls to my normal people and none of them would, and so I went outside that realm, and I just make calls. And uh, to find the home, to find it for this one, it's actually a, a, a group called Lending Home that I've actually used in the past. That and uh, and they looked at it, and they're more of an institutional type of lending for um, uh, investors, Institu institutional type of hard money. I'm paying one and a half points and like nine and a half percent on this right. with them. Yeah, still it's like twenty two hundred bucks a month, you know, to uh, yeah. get it yeah. coming. Yeah. But it's not four thousand, yeah, right. or three thousand. Right. I would expect I mean, for that. Points is twelve percent. That's a significant. Yeah, and so I also, when it comes to analyzing, yeah, so, so that's one thing is that I did use an institutional lender for this one, and then I just go and I make phone calls and I say, hey, uh, I know you do lending. How about out of state? And then I actually found somebody who was like, yeah, I do out of state. Um, I just. Um, I just don't, I've never done out of state, but I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> and so, uh, and so uh, with that, we're working with a, um, uh, with our title agent on making up documents to make sure that we are, he's lending, um, or he's protected just like he was in his, his Utah state contracts. How much through lending home? So lending home landed a 290 for this project, 290,000, but I needed to come in with 15% down. And then I have another lender um, because that's not gonna be enough. Um, I have another lender who gave me 80K um, who is actually a uh, also uh, um, uh, partied in on this deal as an equity partner, not as a money lender. And so he wins with us, he loses with us. Uh, well, hopefully not lose, but I'll, I'll talk about that, but <laughs> he will win with us. and. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's how I have it. Equity blend split is how this one is. <clears throat> so that's a good question, Christian. And guys, so what I need to do right now, I'm gonna be taking some pictures of this property. So I have it for my personal records. And then, um, and then we have a, a meeting to go with uh, actually one of our potential uh, new uh, contractors that we're gonna, well, I wanna be meeting with. And so ask them some questions, network with them, and we're gonna be eating out, so it'd be great. And, um, but yeah, guys, thank you so much for your time and for watching this. And uh, congratulations to Tim and his future. And I'm looking to make it so it's a lot easier for him and his family on doing these deals. So if we were to clear this, Tim himself would be making 25, uh, at least 25 grand from this deal. He is 50% part, he's um, majority owner on this deal. I'm, you know, although I'm 50, I'm sharing that with somebody else for the money and stuff. So 25K for this one, 25 to 40K for him on his very first transaction. That's pretty good. Yeah. So I, I'm excited. You know, shake my hands from across the thing. So, and yeah, looking forward to what he's going to do in the future as well. Yeah. 
Uh, Christian, thank you for hosting this, putting this on for us. Um, if there's no other questions, we'll give everybody else back their day from watching it. Really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, everybody who joined us. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> okay.